welcome to our Smackdown review here on The Nexus. I am Kev, a.k.a. The Nexus. You can follow us here on Twitter. What did I think of Friday Night Smackdown? Ugh. Yep, I wasn't expecting too much. This was more about the, the draft than it was ever a wrestling show. We, I think we had three matches throughout the whole night. Uh, four matches, actually, I'll come, come to think of it. Through the whole night, there was... There was not really much action. It was more about the draft. There were some things in it uh, that confused me. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Uh, firstly, the WWE draft. This is what it was about. Uh, Friday Night Smackdown will get 30 superstars and Raw will get 40 superstars. Raw is a three hour long show, so it gets more. So, for every two Smackdown picks, Raw gets three. Uh, these are the rules here. I'll just leave them up for just a second. Um, so, yep, um, the first match was Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins, um, this was going to be a bit of a, well, let's see what happens, it was a fairly good match, uh, but I had a funny feeling that Seth Rollins was going to win, just because, um, it would have worked out better like that when doing the draft, uh, basically it was whoever won this match was going to be, would get the first pick. Was it going to be Raw or SmackDown? Of course it was going to be Raw. But uh, the, the the contest between the two was very, very good. It ended in a DQ for uh, Roman Reigns. And that was because of the interference of The Fiend. Who came down and attacked uh, Seth Rollins. And dragged him under the, the ring. Now that's happened many, many times before. The Kane Undertaker have done that. Um, then the lights go back up to normal. We see a little bit of smoke. Then he sort of climbs out really quickly. And we see the little head of um, of the fiend there poking around. Then the lights go out again. And then when they're back up, he's back on the ramp. Uh, when we come back from a commercial break, we're basically told that it was a DQ. And uh, Seth Rollins basically won. Uh, so it doesn't look like the issue there between the fiend. But... Um, that could have been the only thing we've seen, and that is because uh, a little bit later on uh, we'll explain the draft. So, uh, that's how we kicked off SmackDown. Um, it was a fairly good match. Uh, these two now had to put on a good match, and it was fairly good, but uh, I think the DQ thing was a bit throwaway. It also made them both look fairly strong uh, and not losing anything from it. So that was that. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick look. Right, the next match. I've got the matches here. I have to keep reminding myself. So we do have a title match uh, for the end of the show, which is a women's title match. And we'll get onto that a little bit later on. Uh, we get the first draft picks. These are the first draft picks just here. Um, throughout all the draft picks, um, actually, I'm going to put all the draft picks right here now. So all the drafts will happen here. So there was four rounds. Um, round three and four were basically opposite each other. They were quite close together. Uh, but as you can see from all of um, from all of the names here, uh, Raw came off better. I don't know whether that's just because there's there's more of them going to Raw, but it just felt like Raw was better off. It became it came better off. Um, you know, you got Ricochet, who was already a Raw superstar anyway. Um, Randy Orton going to Raw. Um, but you've got things like The Fiend and um, Roman uh, Braun Strowman going to SmackDown. Um, so I wonder how that will affect uh, the Universal thing, considering they did a little angle on the first match. So I didn't really, weren't too sure um, how that was going to play out. Um, it's also worth noting as well that tag teams are counted as one draft pick. Uh, and Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross are a tag team, but they were considered separate. But wait for it to Raw anyway. So I don't really know. Uh, I really don't know what's happening with the women's uh, tag team titles at the moment. Uh, there has been some rumours of them um, retiring the titles already. I hope they don't. I hope that uh, My daughters absolutely love those titles, and I think by pushing the women have the tag tonight. I think it was a good thing taking them away it could be a little bit yeah 
Uh, also, there was a couple of strange things. Remember, this is on Fox Sport in the US, and it's it's really even though that WWE has this global uh, presence, it is still a US product, and that is where it's always based. And it you couldn't get more US than um, than when they were doing the draft. So they had the USA Network War Room and the Fox War Room. Um, there was a guy in a robot suit. None of this, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm from the UK. I watch it on Sky. Um, but I, I don't watch the NFL and I don't have Fox Sport. So I didn't recognize anybody on it. They were doing, oh, what was the best draft pick? Who's your favourite superstar? All this sort of stuff. It was just a bit like, I don't know who these are. Maybe, you know, it is for you. Like I said, it is for you. But I just didn't get those bits. And I didn't get the bits with the war room either. And it seemed like they were doing it how they do the NFL draft. Even though I don't know how that happens or what sort of processes are involved. There was a lot of pundits on it as well. Uh, that took off. Took up quite a bit of time. Uh, there was also the uh, the desk um, here with Samoan Joe. It was good to see Samoan Joe, uh, Beth Phoenix, Booker T, and Renee um, Renee Young. Uh, now this is sort of a pre-show thing that they do on a lot of the pay-per-views. When they have a pre-show, they sit at the desk and they talk. Um, they done this after every draft, and it obviously took up time and. Yeah, it, once again, it was something that was put there, obviously, for to make it more sporty, maybe like and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I did. I've I've been through the drafts with WWE many, many times. It was it was done a little bit different, but all this pundit stuff, it was clearly for the Fox Sport audience, which I'm not. Uh, I'd like to know what you guys at home thought of that segment, because I I didn't really. Um, didn't really think much of it, to be fair. Um, then we get uh, our second match. I must get into that. It was King Corbin versus um, Chad Gable. Now, there's a two things that I want to point out here. One, we have seen this match four times. Um, we thought we were going on to like, this new era. You know, where we had that that period on Raw and SmackDown where they were just given the same matches week in, week out. We've had this match four times. And they had, the weird thing was they were ha they had a Hell in a Cell match at Hell in a Cell, uh, not a Hell in a Cell match, but they had a match at Hell in a Cell. And it was, um, I, I thought that was their last match. I'm, I'm, I can remember them saying this is a, the last encounter. Here we are again, Friday Night Smackdown. But he's not going by Chad Gable anymore. He's going by Shorty Gable. Are we going back to the rubbish gimmicks again? I don't know, but he's he's now coming out as Shorty Gable. Uh, the match is what it is. Corbin won. I have really got bored with with this now. Uh, I hope I don't. I hope they're split up because I don't really want this to happen again. Chad Gable and uh, Baron Corbin are both good wrestlers, but I've seen them enough fighting together now. So, and we need some more consistency and stuff like that. We have got Crown Jewel coming up, uh, and they, I think they should be pushing more for that, which they are in the boxing and MMA stuff, which is wrestling. Um, then we get um, WWE Champion Brock Lesnar. He comes out uh, and starts talking. Well, Paul Heyman starts talking because Brock Lesnar doesn't really talk anymore. Uh, and then we get um, interrupted by, uh, obviously, Rey Mysterio and Kane Valenska. We know that Kane Valenska and Brock Lesnar are going off to the WWE title at Crown Jewel. Why did Kane Valenska get a WWE title shot? Don't know. In fact, I don't even know why Brock Lesnar got a title shot. But there we go. Uh, and then we have um, a six-man tag team match between the OC and the New Day. Now, there was, there was a segment at the start of the New Day's entrance, which was uh, uh, um, doing breast cancer just here. 
Um, that was quite good to see. Uh, I loved the uh, the pink uh, WWE Women's title. They, they look really cool. Uh, but this was normally a segment normally they would have filmed. I've not seen a segment like this. This is normally a segment they, they do for like exclusively on their Facebook channel or, um, or their actual website. So it was weird that it was actually part of the show. Good, because it's showing uh, interest in breast cancer and stuff like that, which I'm all for. But it was just a weird segment that they, they sort of had on the show. But anyway, I I don't I don't want to say that it was it was weird to see, because it was main thing. Normally they leave all that stuff, but it was good that they showed it. Uh, and they done a video package of the two um the two twins. One of them had breast cancer and uh they've been campaigning and stuff like that. And they were awarded the titles from the New Day. Uh, yeah, the match was really good. Um, you know, we had Kofi lose last week um, the WWE title, um, so they I think they needed to come out strong. Obviously, the New Day win. Kofi pins um, um, AJ Styles. That's it. AJ Styles um, for the title. Um, and that is what it is. So, now we're going to be coming up for our main event, which is the SmackDown Women's Championship between uh, Charlotte Flair, who is the Women's Tag Team Champion, and Bailey, who was the ex-Women's uh, Tag Team Champion, where she lost it on Sunday at Hell in a Cell. So, um, at this point... Um, Charlotte has had the title less than 24 hours, uh, less than less than a week, not 24, less than a week. Um, it was a fairly good match. We, uh, the, the start of the match, it came out, uh, Bailey, uh, she had a hood up, the flaily tube men were there. Um, she threw off her hoodie. She's now got short black hair, so she cut off the ponytail. Uh, she's sporting a, a, a new sort of, um, a new attire as well. Uh, she grabs this this axe handle that's got blades on it and slashes the flailing tube men and pushes the, the jets that push them up off the stage. This is more for her heel turn. So we're getting more into it. Um, I did say, and I have mentioned in my other ones, that I thought that she needed to get rid of the music and to get rid of the flailing tube man. If she wants to be pushed as a heel... Uh, it's also worth noting that um, Sasha Banks is now a SmackDown superstar, which came up earlier as part of the draft picks. Um, so it was interesting to see how this would play out. No one knew what, how it would play out. But it was nice to see Bailey pushing now. I can't wait for her to see her next, because obviously she'll be hopefully sporting a brand new entrance music. So that'll be very, very interesting to see how that comes out. Uh, anyway, so fairly good match. Um, um, Charlotte Flair gets her cut on her hand during the match. Just here, uh, there's a bit of blood. Um, yeah, it was a good one-to-one, one-two uh, one match. Lots of uh, action in it. Um, but Bailey wins. She wins the women's SmackDown tag team, uh, the women's SmackDown title. She wins uh, with a roll-up, but she has hold of the hair, so she's going. She's using the ropes as well, so she's really going for the the hill the hill look which is really good i think bailey's sort of been missing that so bailey is now our new smackdown women's champion so um by going by what the drafts and everything else i would have guessed that um she'll be on smackdown as well it's going to be very interesting her being the smackdown uh women's champion how uh sasha banks will sit sit now with that will they still be teaming um, will there be a double cross? We don't know. Obviously, the draft is going to continue on Monday night. Uh, I'll be doing a review on that in this similar format. I hope you like the, the change of format as well. I will be doing some live shows um, as well. Um, but uh, it's much easier to edit this, as you can see. Um, and I can do lots of stuff with it while it's like this. But... Overall, I think SmackDown was it was it was all heavily draft related, um, a little bit light on the wrestling. It was good to see Bailey win the women's SmackDown, uh, SmackDown uh, title again. 
Um, and that was it, really. It was just a, 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 a sort of a normal SmackDown, really. Um, without all the draft, I think they could have got maybe one or two matches in, maybe. I mean, they said that with the move, they wanted to go more on the on the sports side of things. This didn't live up to that. Um, I just hope... You know, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Uh, we've got a long way to go. So, anyway, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't the best, but it was okay. Anyway, thank you for uh, watching. Make sure you click to subscribe, like this video, and we'll see you at the next review.